Hello, I am David Hilscher. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something a university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. One of the biggest questions I get from people is, hey, Dave, when is the tide going to turn? When are we finally going to realize that relativity is wrong, the Big Bang wrong, Big Bang's wrong, plate tectonics is wrong, um, particle physics is wrong? When will we, When is that going to happen? It seems like it's never going to happen. It doesn't matter how many people were on, on the Internet when we're gathering. We've been doing this for over 20 years, the CNDMPA, now the CMPS. We have people working on things for decades, publishing books, publishing papers, publishing, publishing procedure, proceedings. What gives? Why haven't we moved? Why haven't we moved the needle? Oh, we need, well, some of the answers are these. Uh, we need a celebrity endorsement. We need so-and-so to give a celebrity endorsement. Well, that's happened before. We've had celebrities believe in UFOs. We've had celebrities b believe in uh, all kinds of other things. Ancient astronauts believe in other kinds of ideas. Right or wrong, I'm not here to criticize them. But that doesn't seem to change. What happens is that person then gets labeled you know, a crackpot. Well, what if we what if we come up with, it, with a, an incredible technology, and that technology will move us forward? And the only way we can explain that technology is to throw away mainstream science. Well, again, if we do something, mainstream science will try to explain it. That's really really hard for them not to jump on board and try to explain what's going on. I did a um, a, a video. Uh, very recently on the EM drive. The EM drive is something that NASA is looking into. And that is not explainable by mainstream science. And they're looking for all their alternatives, which a lot of them, in my opinion, in my own opinion, aren't the right alternatives. But they are looking at them. And that's the most important thing. Is that going to change it if we make an EM drive and no one can explain it? Something else will explain it? What is it that makes a paradigm shift? Well, paradigm shifts happen when a new idea or a new model come along that people really grab a hold of. The idea that we can get rid of what we have and then not have a replacement is really hard for people to, to imagine. They're just saying, well, what are we doing then? Well, what we're really doing is engineering. We're not doing physics. We're not doing the theory when we are doing a technical world and a technical breakthrough can happen way before we understand the phenomena. A good example of that's laser, laser light. Laser light is something that we do not know how it really works. We don't have a model really for it. How can a waves, uh, light waves go in a straight line? Oh, well, they're photons. Well, the problem is we have photons and we have uh, wave characteristics of light, then we can't reconcile them, at least in mainstream. Um, what, hap what would happen if we had a great scientist, not a great celebrity, a great, you know, celebrity like um, Dr. Neil Tyson, Degra Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's not a, he's not a scientist. He's a celebrity. You know, if he were to endorse something, they, they probably label him uh, a crackpot. But what if we had the head, the head of physics at, um, Cambridge in the UK and England, the head of physics at MIT or at Caltech come out and say, look, you know, relativity's wrong. Well, maybe then things would switch. What happened with Einstein? Well, you had Eddington really push uh, Einstein's agenda. It wasn't Einstein. He had no name at all. Ed Eddington went down to Brazil, uh, pretended to find the uh, curving of light, uh, the data clearly shows that he cherry-picked it. Clearly, you know, Regardless, doesn't matter. He went down there, blessed it as, hey, this really happened. And look, we've got somebody who can replace uh, Newton's laws with the new uh, relativistic laws. And this person is Einstein. So do we need the person to do that? Do we need a theory to do that? Uh, isn't it sufficient to know that these things are wrong? Well... We just don't know. We don't know what that turning point's going to be. We just got to keep chipping away at it. One of the things is to, to uh, put out videos like this to get more and more people on board with this. Uh, that's one of the reasons, well, pretty much the reason I'm doing this, so that we get critical thinkers out there saying, look, I am not going to accept what's being given to me in school. I, wanna, I demand something different. Uh, that's something that we definitely, definitely need to work on.
and get get out there. We need to keep working as uh, Dr. Uh, Alexander Unsiger says, um, we need to keep plugging away. You're going to work on your own. My father and I are pretty much working on, on our own. We have people who like our model, but we don't have like a team of people working on it. We ourselves are not working on it for pay. We're working on it in our own time. <clears throat> These things are very common amongst people working outside the mainstream. Einstein did it while he was in a patent. His work in, while he was in a patent office, supposedly, all this story of him. And uh, he did it on his own. Well, maybe his wife helped. Whatever. He was an outsider working on something and then had somebody push uh, an idea. And then, in fact, the prediction of that idea then became something that launched him and launched this new paradigm, right or wrong. So we have to just continue on all fronts. We, we meet together so we can bash on each other's uh, work so that we can meet amongst ourselves, our peers, to help better build our own ideas, our own theories, our own models, our own discussion, our own philosophies that we need for the modern world. And we have done that. We have we have things that we are, are realizing. It's simple things like vocabulary and what we use, energy and force and all those things are really just concepts. They're not real. They're very useful. They're useful as heck. But the physical world and, and, and uh, the part where we have the mathematics, we are starting to understand that a lot more and not fall into the trap where we get things like space-time, the fabric of space-time, the fabric of space, bending space, all those kinds of things. So keep on work. We have the people have to keep on working. We have to try to develop actually new technologies, which people in, in, in our area are trying to do. People who are tinkerers in their home are trying to do things. And we have to develop, continue to develop uh, new theories and new ideas. And also, going even back further, we have to develop very rigorous arguments against the problems in mainstream, the, prob the theories in mainstream. We're talking right now uh, and in the CMPS with really pretty brilliant minds and arguing and debate how to do this. We have a, somebody in our group who's a lawyer and says, look, we need to show how special relativities, well, let's put them down. We got to do it this way, like a jury's out and gives, uh, gives jury this information. Really great uh, feedback in our last meeting for this. So what do we do now to uh, push this forward? What's going to be the magic bullet? I don't know, but I can tell you some ideas from our own model, our particle model of things that could happen. This is not arrogance. This is not saying we are right, but we have a model and it's working pretty well. And it explains things that other, that mainstream can't explain. What are the things that I can see with our model? Well, we have an infinite level in our model because you can never have the ultimate particle. That's not our idea. That's uh, Graham Borkert. Uh, he is the one who really uh, developed the idea of infinity much more than we did, but we use that. Well, what are the things we can look at in our model? How about faster than light? Well, the G1 particle, which is light, gravity, electricity, electromagnetic uh, magnetic, uh, ma magnetic fields, they're all G1 particles. It's got a sort of a limiting velocity. It goes, it goes faster and it can go slower, not by much. And so, well, we could trap off some feel light. No, not good. Well, G2 particles, which is a level down, which keep the G1 particles, which would be keeping the electron in orbit around the atom, that, or in this case, G1 particle, because we say it's all the same uh, particle. So this G1 particle is going around. Well, what keeps it in orbit is just like what keeps the sun around in orbit. I mean, the Earth around orbit around the sun and the, uh, the sun around orbit around the, uh, the galaxy are a gravitational field. The field is made up of all these little moving particles. Well, the same thing happens at the atomic level. We have even another level down. That's why we call it G2. The G2 particle is traveling probably at C squared. So if, if you do some calculations on C squared, if we could develop a G2 particle uh, transmission where we could transmit those waves and catch those waves, we could actually communicate to Mars in a fraction of a second, not seconds or minutes or whatever. So that would be pretty good. How about traveling through uh, faster than the speed of light? A lot harder. Our model shows that, yeah, things may fall apart because we have integrity of the atom and if we're moving and if we're moving against something, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. We don't know. Something we haven't really looked at in our model. 
but another thing that could be amazing is our model and it's, I don't think it's our, our, only our model shows that we could at some time with nucleons with just regular nucleons which would be protons and neutrons but we call them just nucleons and G1 particles or electrons we could actually do what alchemists have always wanted to do make atoms it's happening right now according to what we think inside the earth and actually inside almost all bodies where you have uh, nucleons from atoms uh, being shot out from the Sun they go much slower you have uh, g1 particles which they you know people call electrons or they call it gravity they call it light same thing all, all coming at us those things get recombined inside the earth and we get more mass because really the part of mass is the g2 particle the g1 nucleons but again so our model predicts we should someday be able to not have to worry about taking things to Mars because we could turn uh, we could make man manufacture atoms and make the atoms we need to produce the things we need uh, the other thing we could do is do f super fast communications um, and it, we do have a model that could eventually say okay how can we break the speed of uh, light that's that uh, light barrier so there are some ideas of just from a model prediction so remember what I say don't take my word for it this is just my opinion this is just my take on it but uh, that's the best answer I have and you know don't take my word on, on faith or anybody else's just stay critical stay thinking I'm David Hilster I'm your science therapist no we don't know the path forward but we uh, we don't know when but we do know the path forward and that is to keep progressing at all levels that we can use as many people's uh, great ideas to move it and eventually when we get enough people who have gotten their therapy and, and get enough critical thinkers out there the tides will turn and that's the answer ciao for now